Hello and welcome to SAT TV Week, the news programme for the global satellite industry. In this week's programme, Tricia has to launch news and Eleanor looks at news of a metamaterials based antenna. But first, growing overseas sales representing 75% of total revenues have helped Herefordshire based ETL Systems win the prestigious Queen's Award for International Trade for the third time. ETL is an experienced global designer and manufacturer of RF distribution equipment for satellite communications. Their 69 strong business is located close to the BT Satellite Earth Station at Maidley in England and has a purpose-built secure factory offering 3D mechanical, RF and microwave CAD design along with full testing facilities. The successful British brand recognised internationally for quality has posted impressive new or increasing orders in the Ukraine, Slovenia, Poland, Argentina, Indonesia, Japan, New Caledonia and Chile and significantly increased sales in the US. It is a satellite specialist and designs and manufactures equipment for the broadcast, telecoms, satellite communication and government sectors. Earlier this year ETO opened a brand new North American headquarters in the US to take advantage of its ongoing and rapid expansion on the continent. More than 40% of its annual revenues now come from the region. Speedcast has announced the buyout of Pactel International, a leading satellite communication service provider based in Australia. The closing of the transaction is subject to regulatory approval. The acquisition will consolidate Speedcast's leadership position in the Asia-Pacific region and provide the company with an expanded presence in Australia and the Pacific. Pacto International provides satellite communication solutions throughout Australia and the Pacific. The company focuses on servicing its customer requirements for internet, private networking and voice services. Founded in 1999, Pacto is headquartered in Sydney, Australia and has additional offices in Perth and Jakarta. With this acquisition, Speedcast will offer unique engineering capabilities with over 50 skilled engineers across the Asia-Pacific region, allowing it to continue to support its growing base of customers and partners there. Speedcast network of 25 teleports worldwide provides global services with unmatched flexibility and redundancy. Digiturk, Turkey's leading pay TV platform, has launched a dedicated demonstration 4K channel in partnership with Utilsat Communications. The groundbreaking broadcast the first time 4K has been shown in Turkey helps Digiturk lay the foundations for the next step change in television broadcasting. The first broadcast in Turkey took place on the 2nd of April at Digiturk's headquarters using content aired for the first time and transmitted via the Utilsat 7A satellite, home to Digiturk's pay TV platform. Delivering a resolution of 8 million pixels, four times the resolution of HD TV, Ultra HD is poised to mark the next big leap forward in the immersive viewing experience. Now here is Trisha with the launch news. Orbital Sciences Corporation has completed a successful test launch of its new Antares rocket from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport located at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Eastern Virginia. The test flight demonstrated all operational aspects of the new Antares launcher, including the ascent to space and accurate delivery of a simulated payload to a target orbit of approximately 150 by 160 miles with an inclination of 51.6 degrees. The same launch profile it will use for Orbital's upcoming cargo supply missions to the International Space Station for NASA. The test launch, dubbed the Antares A1 mission, was conducted under the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services Space Act Agreement Orbital entered into with NASA in 2008. Following its successful demonstration mission to the ISS of Orbital's complete system in mid-2013, including the launch of the first Cygnus cargo logistics spacecraft, 
Orbital will begin regular operational cargo delivery missions to the space station under its commercial resupply services CRS contract with NASA. The 1.9 billion CRS contract calls for a delivery up to 20,000 kilograms of essential supplies to the ISS over eight separate missions from 2013 to 2016. In addition to supporting cargo missions to the ISS, the new Interis rocket will offer other commercial, civil government and defence and intelligence customers affordable and reliable medium-class launch services for medium-class satellites that do not require the industry's larger, more expensive launch vehicles. Now here is Eleanor with news of a Metamaterials based antenna. KaiMeta has successfully closed the link with the KA band DTH satellite transporting high definition TV signals. KaiMeta believes that this is the first time a Metamaterials based antenna has established a connection with a KA band satellite. The connection used an aperture size of 15 by 17 inches and was about 1 cm thick. The antenna was powered by a USB cable using less than 3 watts of power to drive the electronic beam forming antenna. According to Bob McCambridge, Kymeta's Chief Operating Officer, this is a significant milestone because it proves that our technology works in the real world environment outside of a laboratory and that it holds promise of becoming a viable solution for satellite communications. The technology behind Kymeta's Meta Materials Antenna was developed by the co-founder and chief technology officer of Kymeta and an expert in the field of Meta Materials, who worked on the use of advanced structured materials in beam forming applications. His research resulted in the PCB-like surface that allows for an antenna that is flat, light and can be mass produced using existing manufacturing techniques available to the industry for low cost production. Kymeta recently announced a development partnership with Inmarsat and is talking with partners across numerous industries about potential applications of its technology. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching.